The Monetary Authority of Singapore is testing new physical tokens meant to improve banking security. Oh, it's gathering feedback and considering user journeys. But the timeline for a potential rollout is still unclear. Analysts say persuading users to tolerate some inconvenience might pose the biggest challenge. Caitlin Ng with this report. Digital banking has brought convenience, but criminals are exploiting that too through phishing scams. Headlines like these have become increasingly common, with customers tricked into fake websites and asked to give up their internet banking details. With the cyber landscape becoming increasingly complex, authorities are looking at new ways to prevent scams. One way that's being discussed is by using Fast Identity Online or FIDO compliant tokens. Unlike the old physical tokens, FIDO tokens must be inserted into a customer's device to approve higher value internet banking payments and transfers. FIDO essentially acts like a circuit breaker against many of the common attacks that we are seeing and expected to see in the future. Attackers might be able to compromise a mobile device through malware and therefore read the OTPs and, and the financial transactions. Uh, FIDO provides a very important air gap against those types of attacks. But there are several considerations and potential roadblocks. The biggest shift that needs to happen is just the user journey. How they interact with their uh, digital assets, how they interact with their digital providers and banks. From a broader ecosystem perspective, there needs to be a lot of communications and a lot of change management that happens uh, on the provider side. In a written statement on 11th of November, MAS says it's carefully considering user journeys and adoption challenges before determining the scope and timing of FIDO's introduction. Meantime, local banks are strengthening existing measures from using AI to surveil banking activity to adding more checks during risky transactions. Now we are trying to reverse all these conveniences to introduce some form of friction to slow down a transaction and introduce things like cognitive breaks, asking you to think through whether you want to transfer or not. I think that's really the part that um, banks are struggling, uh, including ourselves. Beyond going into more security tools, which is what we will continue to do, and we'll implement a spate of tools which will include cooling measures, uh, which will include more surveillance, which will empower customers with more security tools at their fingertips. The Association of Banks in Singapore says that while the industry as a whole looks to strengthen protection measures, these would result in some friction. In the coming months, banks will also implement more anti-scam measures such as in-app notifications to verify incoming calls. ABS says it will continue to work with MAS and SPF to continue bringing down scam cases in Singapore. And Benjamin Ang joins now. He's head of the Centre of Excellence for National Security at the S. Rajaram School of International Studies at Nanyang Technological University. Those are coming, uh, joining us this evening, Mr Ang. Well, this might be that great leap forward in terms of security in digital banking. Do you see it as that? I think it's helpful because it will make sure that if you're on a fake website, you won't be necessarily keying in your password and your OTP. And this actually is where a lot of weaknesses are because our passwords are so easily stolen and the OTPs are also so easily stolen now so that they are not a good security. So How this adds an additional layer. your phone, right? How can they steal your OTP? So what happens is, and it's happened to me in the past, that I get a link, I go to a fake website, I key in my password in the fake website, the bad guys take it and put it in the real website. The real website sends me an OTP by SMS, I key in my OTP into the fake website, the bad guys take it and put it in the real website, and then they're into my account. And that's how fast it happens. So actually, well, uh, with exactly. the so device... They, so they've, they've learned tech catching up on tech. So this is tech trying to outstrip what tech elsewhere has gained. So we have this uh, FIDO, this actual physical token. It captures your thing, maybe your facial recognition, what your face looks like, the, the, the lineaments, maybe your 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 uh, what, what your what, what do they call this? I forget that. Biometrics. Biometrics. Well, the so, face or finger. Okay, it's captured there. You insert it. It links it up, but shifts the fronts of vulnerability elsewhere. Would you say that? I think what it does is that it eliminates one kind of vulnerability. And to be fair, that's a pretty big vulnerability that we have because passwords are so, they have been stolen hundreds of times. They are widely available and OTPs can, are easily compromised. We know that now. But of course, nothing is 
ever 100% foolproof. We could never say that something is unhackable because the human element is still the best way to get into an account. To use actual fraud and deception actually is the best way. So this is, say for example, if you were trying to scam someone, all you need to do is convince that human element to send you the money with the FIDO token. So how does this protect me against scams? Yes, so you've got it right. Because if I'm convinced that you are my relative and you are deeply in need of money, or maybe you're offering me some fantastic deal uh, that's going to make me very wealthy, or maybe you are investigating me for money laundering and I need to transfer the money, all of these reasons will make me use my actual FIDO device in my actual account and actually transfer my actual money to you. So it doesn't solve that problem, but it reduces the risk of the other types. All right, so we heard uh, my colleague's uh, news report there. Uh, one of the analysts, uh, the head of anti-fraud at OCBC saying, we're trying to reverse conveniences and people do not be like being forced to take cognitive breaks, asking you to think through whether you want to transfer or not. But that is, in fact, how you address fraud and scams, forcing people to actually think. Absolutely right. And one of the problems is that we've gotten so used to working at a speed which is actually beyond what we can actually handle. So I took a cab here and the cab could have easily gone at 150 kmh. That would be much more convenient. I get here much faster, but at great risk to the driver and to myself. Instead, there are limits so he can only drive up to 80 or 90. That's inconvenient, but much safer for all of us. So in other words, this worry about people being reluctant to take on more inconvenience. They should be encouraged to take on the inconvenience that comes with thinking more carefully about how they are transferring their money. Absolutely. To me, convenience should not override our security because we cannot give up our own safety and security for the sake of saving a few minutes or a few hours even. That There's so much at stake, life savings, family's future, that you don't want to risk it just for the sake of convenience. So you're an expert in this, right? How do you convince people that, well, it's convenient, but that's at some risk to your own security and your money? I hope that everyone takes the time to stop and think. And in many kinds of areas that you look at national security, whether it's doing something dangerous or spreading a false message or clicking on a dangerous link, it all comes down to stop and think before we do. But if you were to measure, at least until tech catches up again, what this kind of device might actually do, how much of a window does that give us in terms of increased security in digital banking? I think it definitely helps to eliminate the risk that comes from passwords right now, because that's a huge risk that's open still. And if we can eliminate that risk, it doesn't solve everything, but it helps. But you know, this password theft, right? Most of it, and it's frightening every time we see those statistics, is not because someone hacked, some high-tech hack into your computers, because someone sent you a dodgy email to which you rather foolishly, in my case, replied and gave your password away. So then again, that's the human element. It's not a tech thing. Does FIDO address that? The good news is that if I'm on a website, which is looking like my bank, but not really my bank, it won't be able to trigger my FIDO. And then I won't be able to get in. Why so, not? Because the FIDO will be linked to the bank website. That's the registration that needs to be done beforehand. That's part of the inconvenience that the experts were talking about. And that's something that we have to think about and probably find ways to make it easier for people to get on board. But again, that's one of the additional frictions that's good. It, it, it sort of this obvious, uh, it's obvious to you, not obvious to me. So if, could, could someone not just steal my token? And yeah, then you right. But... You're absolutely right, but it would take them having to steal your physical token, whereas right now they can send out thousands of messages to thousands of unsuspecting victims and they just need a few to hit, whereas it's much harder for them to try and steal thousands of tokens all over uh, Singapore. Also, at the risk of asking you to repeat yourself, what's your final message in just 30 seconds of on-air time for you? Last question. Please stop and think before you click. Don't let convenience override your security. 
All right. Thanks for that. Mr. Benjamin Ang is a security expert from RSIS in NTU. Thanks for joining us this evening.